Hello everyone, today I'm gonna to be filling this palette because I'm getting ready to go on a vacation to Italy. I'm going to Florence, Venice, and Rome. Not in that order, but it's gonna be an exciting vacation for me and my fiance and we're lucky to be able to go and I'm lucky to be able to have all these cool watercolors. So after an exhausting few minutes of deciding what order I wanted them to go in, um, I pretty much decided on this and I like them to be like in the rainbow spectrum. And I also have black and white that are just gonna go in one of the, the mixing wells. Unfortunately, I have 22 colors, well, not in including black and white, but only 20 wells. And I do tend to use black and white a little bit less than my other colors. So some of these colors came in a set that I got from my fiance when I graduated with my graduate degree because he is an awesome fiance and loves to give me things that I probably don't deserve, like amazing paint. Um, so this is actually a Windsor and Newton professional watercolor and it is a little bit on the expensive side. So I definitely would not recommend this particular uh, paint if you've never ever watercolored before and you're just kind of like interested in trying it out for like the first time. Um, I did start with Winsor & Newton brand. I started with their Cotman paints, but that's a student grade paint and can be had for a lot cheaper. I really like their Cotman brand. I really like everything Winsor & Newton makes. I'm kind of a fangirl, but their Cotman brand is pretty excellent, especially for the price point that it can be had at. So if you're interested in getting into watercolor for the first time ever, then I would direct you direct you to considering maybe the Cotman brand. Um, you can get a, tw I think it's a 12 pan kind of like travel palette set for I think right around, well it depends on the store you go to, but you can get a set probably for around 20 to $25 with a coupon, which I know can be expensive to some people, but um, when we're talking like professional watercolor or good student grade watercolor, that's not uh, the most outrageous price tag. And this is a beautiful color. This is my cobalt turquoise light. And I'm really happy that I bought that because it's so beautiful. So some of these are new, um, such, as this cobalt turquoise light and my cobalt turquoise um, or cobalt green. So a few of these are brand new and I've never painted with them before so it's very exciting. But if you do want to get into watercolor, um, I hope you stick around and watch some of my videos. I enjoy watercoloring and um, I'm not professionally trained but hopefully I'll be able to give you guys some tips as I learn them and maybe you'll learn something from my channel. But I just want to say that if you do want to get into watercolor and you can't start with the most expensive watercolor supplies, that that's totally 100% a-okay. Like there's no need to start with $100 watercolor supplies if you don't even know that you're going to enjoy the medium. Um, in fact, if if you really are strapped for money and or you you really don't want to spend a lot on a medium that you don't know if you're you'll enjoy um, Walmart Michaels they all have sets that can be had for very cheap like sub ten dollars around like five and I'm not talking like Crayola brand although um, from what I've seen the Crayola watercolors are a really nice quality watercolor for their price point but you can get I think I got a cheap set at Walmart once upon a time just to like play around with some techniques and I think that set was around five dollars for six tubes and it definitely um, isn't the best quality so don't be expecting professional quality watercolor for that price but it's definitely good to get if you never watercolored before and you just kind of want to play around with the medium. So another question might be, what's the difference between professional watercolor 
and student grade or professional watercolor and even this Crayola palette that my kid has or that I had when I was a child. And that's a really good question and there are several different ways to answer that. So number one, the professional watercolors are going to last much longer. Um, and what I mean by that is that when you paint your picture onto the paper, especially if you're using like a professional quality paper such as Arches or Fabriano, the drawing will last for many more years than something like a Crayola paint on printer paper. Um, the Crayola is just not going to last quite as long. Ooh, that one it's really excited. Really excited to get in my palette and to get used. The Crayola paint's just not going to last as long. It's not going to look vibrant over the years. It will start to fade. So if you're just getting into painting, that might not be such a big concern for you. But if you um, are thinking about selling your artwork, then I, I highly recommend that you at least get student grade because student grade, it's, it's kind of your middle ground. It's going to have decent long longevity. The colors are going to mix well. You're not going to have problems with re-wetting. So some people only paint with wet watercolor. And what that means is like they'll put a little drop out each time they want a watercolor. And that's going to give you super vibrant colors. What I prefer to do is make my palette and then I'm going to let this dry. And then you re-wet this pigment with water. And what I found is professional watercolor re-wets much better than even the student grade. But you're still going to get really good re-wetting in the student grade. It's still going to be a really good starting place. So if you just want to kind of poke around with watercolor, just kind of want to see what it's all about, and you think you might not like it, or you're kind of conflicted on whether you'll like it, I really recommend probably starting with some of the cheaper sets. But if you're a pretty seasoned artist and you know you're probably going to like watercolor and whatever happens, you might want to be giving gifts or selling the prints or the paints, not the prints, but the, the paintings that you make, then I'm going to kind of steer you towards more of like a student grade, such as the Windsor Newton Cotman um, are the Van Gogh watercolors. They're a pretty good student grade. Those are the two I can recommend because I, those are the two that I've tried. I know a lot of people use like the Koi watercolors and they really like them and I think they're pretty good for, um, oh, hi Hattie. How are you? Oh no, I can't. <laughs> are you making a cameo? Hi baby. You can sit on my lap or not. <laughs> All right. Bye Hattie. Um, I forgot what I was saying. I know some people use the Koi watercolor, and you can get a lot of good recommendations by watching um, other YouTubers watercolor, but maybe eventually that's something that I'll be able to do on this channel is kind of go through watercolors and give you, like, the lowdown on which ones I think are better than others, but of course that's just my opinion, and shouldn't be taken too, too seriously because like I said, um, I am 100% self-taught pretty much. Like I learned watercolor on a street in Florence and I started painting when it was dark. So I definitely have a lot to learn, but that's kind of why I wanted to start this channel is it gives me motivation to continue watercoloring, continue to learn. But anyway, if you're going to sell your watercolors, then definitely... I would recommend at minimum getting something like a Stratmore paper and because you can get no name watercolor paper but the Stratmore um, is a pretty good brand and then some mid-range watercolors. But if you just want to play with watercolor then you can definitely get the cheaper and there's nothing that says that you can't give them as gifts if you're using the cheaper watercolor or send watercolor cards or anything like that. Um, but it is, it is nice if you're going to sell it, especially to at least use a mid-range. Because if someone frames it and it kind of like gets a little bit more sunlight than it should and fades within a couple years, that's always kind of a bummer for the person who spent money on it. But cats 
are like playing in the blinds. They are so hyper right now. They're always hyper when I'm filming a video and then they like sleep the other like 82% of their lives. And that's hi again. Hi. Oh, hey baby. I feel like every time I make a video, it like alternates on which cat. Ooh, I'm stepping on. <gasps> okay, I think we're safe. I think we're safe. How do you know? Don't step in the watercolor. So, cute story. One time I was filling my palette and she did step in it like a little bit. She got like a tiny bit on her like leg, but I didn't want her to lick it off because it's not always good for her. So like I had to take her to the sink and wash her foot and she was not happy, not a happy cat. Um, but so back to like the difference between professional and other types of watercolor. Professional ones will also use more expensive pigment. So the pigment is actually what makes the color. For instance, I have several Hi, hi. I have several shades that are, um, get that, like, clump off. I have several shades that are made of cobalt, and cobalt is a really, really <laughs> expensive pigment. So, you're not going to see something like cobalt in, how do you know you, it smells good, but, like, you can't sniff it too much. You're going to get it on your nose, and you're going to lick it. <laughs> Honey, why are you such a bad baby? She's a good baby most of the time. Now she's on my shoulder. But, um, so you're going to be getting more expensive pigments. So cobalt is a really expensive pigment that you wouldn't normally see in even a student grade. Just because I think it costs, um, I know for pottery, the cobalt pigment that you put in your glazes costs something like more than $50 a pound, but it's really expensive. And then some of the yellows can be really expensive. And I'm using like a, a raw sienna here, which I bought separately. But, and if you go on something like Dick Blick and you, you look, you can actually see the tubes and some tubes cost $8 and some tubes cost six and some tubes cost 13 for five mils. So it's just um, more expensive pigments, and then generally they're also using more expensive binders, and that's kind of what holds everything together is your binder. And howdy. And overall, <laughs> cats. Overall, they are going to be using um, more premium quality ingredients, which is another reason, like using the more pure pigments, is going to give you. A richer color so in the paintings I've done with my professional watercolors I've seen like a, a much richer color overall when using professional so you might be asking what are the colors that you just put in your pigment and this is raw sienna and next I have burnt umber and then I have Indian red I love this color and after that, I have burnt sienna. So I do have raw sienna and burnt sienna. And I love the raw sienna. So this is burnt sienna, and that's raw sienna. So you can see that they are strikingly different colors, even though even though they share a, like a, one of the same pigments. And then this is just the Windsor red. Next is alizarin crimson. And then it's Opera Rose. And this is one I bought that didn't come in the set. I just wanted some like pinks and purples. Um, one thing I thought that the set of 12 my fiance bought me, it was super thoughtful. Don't get me wrong. I love the gift. But I thought it was a little lacking in some of the pinks and purples. And this is just a really hard color to mix in general. Hi, Addie. You're back again. Um, so the next and this, this very bright, vibrant color is Cobalt Violet. So it has a cobalt pigment in it. And then there's Potter's Pink, and I like pottery, so I, of course, like that color. And then Permanent Mauve, and then after that, we have Yellow Orca, Windsor Yellow, so it's the Windsor Yellow, and then Lemon Yellow, and then there's the Olive Green next to the Permanent Sap Green, and then that's my other cat hat. That's Millie. And then there's cobalt green. And that has that cobalt pigment in it again. And then cobalt turquoise lights. Hi, hi. 
already. <laughs> You're getting too curious. And then Paleo Turquoise. And then I have the Windsor Blue. <laughs> Daddy. Hi. And then I have the French Ultramarine. <laughs> I don't even know if you can see that. No. Do you have that on your face? No, you don't. Okay. Come here. Hi, Millie, you stay down there. Um, and I do have two more colors. I have white and black. So I'm going to try and do this one-handed because I've trapped Hattie. And I'm holding her. But Millie looks like she's about to come up here. I don't know. They're both going to make cameos in the video. Oh, Millie. Oh, no. Go down. Okay, she's <laughs> Um, So I'm just going to put a little blob of black here. That'll be good. And then I'll put a little blob of white as well. And so the white, and this is a ivory black, and the white is Chinese white. So you'll get some watercolor purists who say that in watercolor there's no such thing as a white or a black. So um, that's what my high school art teachers kind of definitely believed so that we didn't have this in high school. Not that I had painted in watercolor in high school. I just remember people complaining about not having a white or the black, but a lot of artists say your white should be the pigment of the paper showing through. But I like to use it. Anyway, um, now the Chinese white is actually kind of toxic, so be a tad bit careful when using this. Don't, um, don't like try and like get it in your mouth or anything like that. So just be a little careful with that. So there's my Chinese white. All right, pull a little more. I don't know how much I'm gonna use when I'm abroad, but I wanna make sure I have more than enough. And then I'm actually going to use a little bit of white gouache paint. And this is the Winsor & Newton, it's Professional Designers Gouache. I also got this for a present. Um, I'm really lucky that people support my, my addiction to art supplies. I might put this over here. And this is gonna be more of an opaque color than the watercolor, at least in my experience. It's a little bit more opaque. Um, but that's it. So that was me filling my palette. If you have any questions about watercolor, you can leave them down below. If you'd like to see any more videos, uh, if you have video ideas, you can also leave that down below. And Hattie is back. But I'm done. I'm going to put this over this so you can't get to it. Yay! Um, if you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll try and find the answer if I don't know it and try and get back to you either in a comment or another video. So, Hattie the Art Cat is signing off. She's being cute. And thank you for watching and have a great day.